All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Stacy Brown Randall, who is in Charlotte, North Carolina. How are you doing, Stacy? I am doing great, John. How are you doing? I'm doing good too. And Stacey is a multiple award-winning author of Generating Business Referrals Without Asking and host of the Roadmap to Referrals podcast and a national speaker. And you teach people and business owners how to generate referrals naturally without manipulating, incentivizing, or even asking. And that's what we're going to talk about today is referrals without asking. So um, Stacey, just let's baseline this for a moment, right? People, a lot of organizations and salespeople and everything still struggle with the whole concept of referrals. Like everybody knows it's, it's, it's a great thing to do and, you know, it can bring you a lot of business. But basically what happens a lot of the times is people just say, oh, uh, you're a new customer. You've been a customer. Hey, do, do, do you know anybody else maybe <laughs> who might like this? <laughs> but we seem reluctant. I mean, there always just seems to be some mental block around referrals. Well, there's a mental block around referrals because the tactics that we've been taught for decades and decades about how to generate them are quite terrible. <laughs> when you think about having a brand new client who is all excited about, you know, there's some probably a little bit of apprehension, the buyer's remorse of did I make the right decision while also being excited that they're going to solve their problem and work with you. And then the tactic you're told is then hit them up with, by the way, who do you know is just like you? who should also be working with me, right? Mm -hmm. It's like you suck the energy right out of that relationship because in that moment you have made the referral about you. Mm -hmm. And that's the piece that people miss. Referrals aren't about you. If I made the decision to refer to you, it's because I know somebody who needs what you do and right. I get to be the hero by referring them to you. And so when you take these terrible tactics, like asking for them or, hey, I'll give you 10% commission if you'll send me some clients, right? When we take these terrible, terrible tactics, like asking and manipulation and taking advantage of reciprocity and incentivizing and stuff, we actually are trying to artificially create or manufacture what doesn't actually exist in a referral, which means we're forcing it. And that's why it doesn't work. And our gut reactions to like, hey, this feels terrible asking we just haven't been told we're allowed to listen to them we've been told push through it get uncomfortable just ask right that's what we're told and we're like but why is my gut screaming this is awkward and uncomfortable um because we didn't have a different way to look at generating referrals so that's permeated the industry for generations yeah and and uh and, we, and we've all been through this as well i mean it it is um you know, or, or on being on the receiving end of being asked for referrals. And let's face it, I mean, our heads are so full of stuff that if you ask me for, say, right now, ask me for a referral, like, I'll be like, uh, uh, maybe, I, I don't know, I'll let you know if I think of anybody. But that's the often the problem is like, you just, you just landed on somebody and then expect them to suddenly go, oh, yes, hang on, where's my Rolodex? Sorry. Right. It's like that expectation that you're going to magically be able to come up in an instant with who would be an ideal client for me. And actually what I tell folks is one of the reasons why you don't want to ask or incentivize or do any of the other terrible tactics is because the minute you ask someone or offer to pay someone to, you know, for their for them to refer to you, you've now commoditized the relationship and you've just created homework for them. If I were to ask you for a referral right now, I'm like, "Hey, John, who do you know that needs to learn how to get referrals?" I just created work for you. And yeah. we're all pretty darn busy doing our own work, let alone taking on homework for somebody else. Yeah, no, exactly. And um, my reply would probably be, yeah, maybe, yeah. How about, do you have any referrals for me? Right. <laughs> so how should, how, how should we be approaching this, Stacey? You know, referrals come from relationships. So at the heart of what you need to be paying attention to are the relationships you have. Um, and what we kind of like to call is like the referral ecosystem within your business. So we teach different strategies where you can get referrals from specific people, which are existing referral sources, people who've referred you in the past or are currently referring you, or potential referral sources, people you've identified that you want to refer you. Now, how we teach someone to go about getting more referrals or cultivating somebody into a new referral source is an entirely different process than what you're typically going to learn. 
And so we look at, hey, referrals come from relationships. So what are yours like? Like, do you have specific people that we call referral sources? Do you have people who are referring you now or people you've identified that you want to refer you? But within that referral ecosystem, we also look at it from the buyer's journey perspective when you're dealing with your prospects. We look at it from the client experience process as your clients are going through the process of actually working with you. And then we also kind of look at it a little bit, like kind of zoom out a little bit and look at it from that networking, marketing, social media perspective as well. But those are those pieces that make up that referral ecosystem. And it's really important people recognize that in all of those situations, we're talking about a human on the other end. And that's the piece I feel that people just miss because we're so go, 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 fast, fast, fast. Where's my easy button? Hey, I want some referrals. Let me get them in the next 30 days. I always tell folks, uh, that may not work with referrals. Like we definitely uh-huh. have people who have fast success. Um, but the reality of it is we're talking about another human. We're talking about a relationship and you do not control how they're going to respond or how long it'll take someone to get into a habit of consistently referring you. Yeah, no, I, I agree 100%. And and we tend to do these like referral campaigns. It's suddenly like, you know, it tends to companies will go, ooh, our numbers aren't great this month or whatever. Let's do a referral campaign. And everybody, all the sales people go out and just fire off emails. Do you know anybody? And and as we, and as we already discussed, I mean, I've got other things going on. I don't have time to be looking at that. And plus, it's, as you said, it's not relationship building. I'm just getting some blasts about, you know, do you know somebody? It sounds a little desperate, actually. Yeah, I get those email blasts all the time. They actually, they drive me crazy. One thing, because I'm like, you're definitely not paying attention to who you're sending this to, because yeah. I, above all people, you would never send this to. Uh, because more than likely, I'm going to take that email and make it fodder for my podcast. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> the reality of it is, is that we do, as humans, and there, and we do this in all areas of our lives, some in different areas, Right but we do go looking for the easy button. For me, it's when it comes to exercise. I'm like, where is, where's the easy button for the exercise piece, right? I don't go looking for the easy button with referrals, but we all do this in certain areas of our lives. And as business owners, we are busy and it's a go, go, go kind of world 24 seven. And some people fall into the trap of thinking that that's something that they can push a button blast out an email and people will magically be like, oh yes, here's everybody I've been meaning to send to you for weeks and just hadn't thought about it. Yeah. Like that doesn't work. No. So, uh, so how do you assess or how do you know that you have a relationship or you have people who are at that point where, you know, they can help you I and mean, what have you done to get to that stage? Yeah. So we look at when you're talking about cultivating new people to Mm -hmm. refer you. So you're like cultivating these relationships with folks. We start out by who we identify. All your clients can love you and all of your centers of influence can know what you do. But if they actually don't come across your ideal client with some level of regularity, they're never going to actually consistently refer you. And what we're interested in is those consistent referrals. I don't mean every day or every week Mm -hmm. or even every month, but definitely consistency in terms of how many they'll send you on a year basis. And so for us, what we teach people is, is the backwards approach. And so when people first learn like, okay, you've got these five clients and these 15 center of influence, and you'd love to turn some of them into active referral sources. The first thing we do is make sure we're identifying the right people, the people who actually can refer people to you. The next thing we pay attention to, and this is where we call it the backwards approach, is that we actually start just being normal humans and engaging in a professional relationship, which means we want to have a conversation with them. But guess what we don't make that conversation about? ourselves. Mm -hmm. We don't make it about the fact that we want referrals, need referrals, or who here's who my ideal client is, which is what people want to do because they just want to skip that relationship piece and get to the give me what I need piece. And nobody's interested in giving you what you need before you've invested any time in them. So uh, what we teach is make it about them, which can be really hard for some people who are so focused on getting what they need and moving as fast as they can. But when people really think about it, they're like, of course, before this person would ever put their reputation on the line Mm -hmm. and send people to me that they care about or that they know, they probably need to have a relationship with me. And the fastest way to get them to remember me, for me to occupy space in their mind, is for me to actually show them that I care about them. So we use a conversation piece that's about them, like asking Mm -hmm. questions about them. And then we teach specific follow-up that does allow you to use specific referral seed type language so you can seed the idea of referrals. But it's never 
front and center. It's never the obje- the main objective of the conversation. We're trying to build a relationship. And, you know, we have some people who will start these conversations and within two months, that person has turned into a referral source. Mm-hmm. And some people, it could take a year or longer, right? You know, people don't fit perfectly into the cells on an Excel spreadsheet. They're squishy humans and they do things kind of at their own pace. Yeah, no, they totally do things at their own pace. And, and the other part is, as great a relationship you have with with a, a customer or a referral source, you're not top of mind every single day, every moment. So, I mean, that's another thing you have to keep in in mind. So it, it sounds like that what you're talking about is that you could build, say it's a customer, you could have built a really good relationship, had a really good like discovery process with them, turn them into a customer. But you, you have to take that on to the next level if you want to earn a referral, almost do the same thing again, like in, in discovery. Right. So we consider that a referable client experience. Mm -hmm. And it actually is one of the trainings we have where we have a two prong approach to our objective. So most of the trainings we teach, it's like, hey, this is the objective and this is what you're going to do. And this is how you're going to do it with our referable client experience. So it's actually a, a two prong approach. And the first objective is you actually need to be referable, like your client mm-hmm. experience, it not just the first 30 days, right? But like your client experience as they move from the new stage to the active stage, to the alumni stage, or if they never stop working with you like a CPA, they move into the ongoing stage. Like that client experience needs to be built with referability in mind. And that means mm-hmm. it's not just the amazing work you deliver. That's actually expected. What referability means within your client experience is that not only are you delivering this amazing work and fixing things when things go wrong, because they will, and managing expectations and communicating well, it also means, right, that you're building a relationship with these people and not in the, I got to get coffee with all my clients every quarter. Mm -hmm. Nobody has time for that. People overlook the simple things that can make an impact and a relationship side outside of the work side of what we are doing with our clients. So the first thing we build out is, is your client experience built for referability? Then we come back around the second objective and then we layer on, okay, there are also moments though throughout a client experience where you are more likely to be able to start receiving referrals if that client is going to actually have the potential to refer you because not all will, Mm -hmm. no matter how badly you want them to. And then so we then teach moments within your client experience to start planting referral seeds and then how to identify clients who have greater potential to refer you as well. So it's a two part approach, right? I mean, no one's going to refer crappy work. They're just not, right? (laughs) So you got to have a referable client experience, but then also looking for those moments where you can actually plant referral seeds and generate referrals as well. It's a really important two-part approach. Yeah, and and I think today... Today, we're seeing a lot of hands-off relationships, particularly, I would say, with technology companies and SaaS companies. I mean, I, uh, I'm, I'm a customer of a bunch of different ones who've never heard anything from, never contact me, nothing, you know, no relationship whatsoever. And I think a lot of people have sort of adopted that model and think it's great, like, oh, I've captured you, I don't really have to do anything with you. But I mean, that's never, I'm never going to be a referral source for any of these because I have no relationship with them. And frankly, I'd switch in a minute if I found something better just because I have no relationship. Yeah, and that's true. And it's actually one of the reasons why we don't really work in the SaaS space arena Mm -hmm. because of that mentality permeates that industry, right? It, It is all about scaling and growing and customer acquisition. And they're starting to pay attention now more to the the customer or the client nurturing process as well. Um, But their strategy, their tactics are typically, you know, hey, we'll just give you $25 if you'll refer someone to us. Here's your referral link, right? Like that's typically the model that they use. And the truth is, you're right. We don't have any allegiance to them. I mean, there are always obviously going to be raving fans of SaaS based companies. And they're like, I'm always going to be with XYZ. I'll never leave. But the truth is we most people would if something else came along because that's the model. If you're in a professional services based firm or a creative industry, yeah. like you really cannot operate, you just cannot operate like you're in a SaaS space or technology or e-commerce type company because the mentality is also different. You know, I don't it's really if I'm paying you like 80 bucks a month to deliver this software service for me, I don't actually expect that much from you other mm-hmm. than the software to work and you to help me troubleshoot when it doesn't. Yeah. But if I'm paying you, you know, $10,000 to be my financial advisor, right, and do my financial plan and manage my assets, I'm expecting a little bit of a different relationship. So it's also what the client expects too. 
Yeah, and and I think that's what, and I think this this is where the the work you're doing is is uh, is very important because I think there's a shift there. Like we ourselves, like really push the human touch part, and you know, yeah. build deep relationships with with our customers. And I think that's, and people are, I think, are starting to wake up to that a little more. So I would see what you're talking about, say, like in professional services. I can see that coming over. We certainly like believe in it because uh, you're correct. At the end of the day, is is the relationship that counts. I mean, obviously the product has to do with the product or service says, but the relationship, you're never going to get a referral without a relationship. I think that's just a given, right? And relationships like anything else take investment of time and effort and strategy. Yeah, you have to nurture them. Like, So I always tell folks, yes, I want, my, my goal when I work with anybody is to double, triple or quadruple their referrals and as fast as possible, right? So if I can help you do that in 90 days, awesome. It could take a year as well, right? But the reality of that is where, if we're going to hit the double, the triple, their quadruple mark has a lot to do with where you're starting from, but then also what your nurturing of relationships has looked like in the past. So I definitely work with some people and they're like, I haven't talked to any of these people in years. I'm like, okay, so can we not expect them just to jump up and down yeah. so excited to that you're going to start nurturing your relationship with them and they'll start referring you tomorrow, right? But for others who have done you know, a better job, not the best job of nurturing those relationships, they find that they get quicker results. And I'm like, yeah, it's like low hanging fruit. It's just there waiting for you mm -hmm. to do something a little bit different to be a little bit more intentional about the relationship that you have and to take a little bit more time to nurture that relationship. My way will always take a little bit of more work up front, but as it starts to cultivate and as it starts to work and then your referrals start rolling in, you're going to be so glad that that's the way that you did it because it'll feel better too, because you're just like, you know, John, there are some days I just really do feel like I'm reminding people to be a good human. Like yeah. <laughs> just be a good person, but but let's be a good person with a strategy and the right language and the right type of outreach. But at the end of the day, if you do none of that, just be a good human and actually decide to invest and in, nurture those relationships. Yeah, perfect. I could just take that snippet out and we'll just finish with that. <laughs> 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 just be a good human. No, I love it. Like we say back in Ireland, like sometimes, you know, the long way around is the short way home. And I think that's exactly what you're talking about here is, and we live in a shortcut culture, unfortunately, but these things it always take longer than you would like. Things don't happen immediately the way you would like them and you need to invest time and energy in them. And I think that's to your point, it's a great opportunity for people who are willing to do that because a lot of people aren't willing to do that because they're, they think that AI is going to come up with a tool soon that'll generate referrals. Yes. And we obviously we've played around with chat GPT and some of those AI, um, AI tools and we're like, hey, how do we get referrals? And guess what they tell you? Oh. You should just go, you should go ask for them. <laughs> like yeah. obviously AI still hasn't quite figured out what it looks like <laughs> and what referrals, what it really takes, because most people don't pay attention to the science behind how referrals happen. And that's what our strategies are built on. Most of them are all about just get me to it fast as possible. It just doesn't work that way. Yeah, no, it doesn't. I mean, you know, you compare it to a site. If you, if you don't, if you don't know somebody, you've built a relationship. Some you've got a neighbor up the road you've never, you know, really talked to. You've nodded, and suddenly they turn up on your doorstep asking you for something, you know, and you'd be like a little bit, okay, this is a bit odd. But that's kind of what we're. That's kind of what. Yeah. We're no, it, totally. It's exactly what we're looking for. Sorry, I did not mean to interrupt you. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Um, so, um, so what is what is the what is one piece of advice that you would give to uh, to to people who are considering like revisiting referrals. Cause when I say revisiting referrals, because I do believe most companies don't have an ongoing referral strategy. They just, it's a, just an initiative that's brushed off, dusted off every so often. Yeah. So two things I would say, um, in particular for companies that have a sales team, the first thing you need to do is decide, are you going to have a company directed strategy that then your sales team will implement? Or are you going to have a salesperson directed strategy that's cultivated and created around them and who their relationships are and the company supports that? And right. that's when I work with teams, it's very much one of those things we have to decide um, because it's going to dictate what the, actually the outreach is going to look like. Um, I prefer salespeople directed strategy with mm -hmm. the company supporting them. But of course, all companies do it a little bit differently. Um, the second thing I would say is, is that if you really want to take referrals seriously, if you, you need motivation, 
Mm. And the number one way to get motivation to decide you're going to do something different with referrals and not let it be the bright, shiny object you abandon in 30 days is you actually need to take some time and figure out exactly who's been referring you. And we have information about this on our website. We have a resources tab that actually will walk you through with a spreadsheet of exactly how to identify the people who referred you over the last couple of years and who they've referred to you. We actually kind of do a reverse engineer to get mm -hmm. there. And if you will sit down and map out who your clients are, and then map out the source of how they came to know you. And if that's a referral source, you write down the referral source's name. The minute you look back over the last two, three, four years worth of data of where your clients came from and which of those clients were referred to you and who were the humans that referred them to you, you're probably going to find a list of people that you've been ignoring or that you could do a better job cultivating or the list will be bigger or smaller than you imagined. And that'll definitely give you motivation to say, okay, do I want to do something different now that I have the data in front of me? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great idea. And so I would recommend people go check out that, that spreadsheet and and uh, and see what you're missing out on. Because I mean, let's face it, everybody, you know, we all know that uh, holding on to customers, retention, growing customers, all of that is really good. New customer acquisition, you know, we're in a recession. That's always a little bit more difficult for for a lot of companies. So having having a really well thought out referral um, strategy is is obviously something that you should be looking at right now. It should be always looking at, but certainly now is probably a really really good time. Um, so all Stacey's information will be below this uh, video, so you can get to that spreadsheet and start figuring out your referrals. But before we go, Stacey, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Sure. So as we've been talking about today, I have a singular focus on helping business owners be able to generate referrals naturally without manipulating, without incentivizing, or without even asking. You can find me on most of the social media platforms. Just look for my full name, Stacy Brown Randall. And then of course, home base is our website, stacybrownrandall.com. And that's what we do all day long is help people build the right referral ecosystem within their business. And we do that through online self-study courses, a coaching program where you have access to me, or even working directly with companies and their teams. Yeah, and listen, I would really encourage people to go check it out because as I said at the outset, I mean, referrals are still something a lot of people, a lot of companies struggle with uh, because they don't really have a good strategy and they don't really understand the the science of it in the way that people like Stacey do. So I'd encourage you to go check it out. So thanks again, Stacey. Thank you for watching and listening. And let's see you all again very soon. Yeah.